Good morning again. Here we are in the second week of being apart together. And I spoke last week about joy. And I proposed that maybe we have neglected joy in favor of endurance. The word joy is used 63 times in the New Testament. You add joyful and joyfully, and that brings it up to 70. Whereas endurance and persevere with their derivatives total up to 46. And that's a little bit of trivia, but possibly it's significant. Happy Easter. This is a, a day where Christians all over the world are celebrating, and far be it from us to not celebrate. I want to look one again at where our focus lies. Have we concentrated on the cross to the neglect of the resurrection? And this is a question only we can answer for ourselves. But maybe so. Is the cross important? Absolutely. It's crucial, which is kind of a joke because the word crucial comes from the word for cross. What we need to keep in mind is that endurance is lifelong, but joy is eternal. The cross is crucial. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 2, For I determined to know nothing among you except Christ and him crucified. Jesus' death for us is the only hope that we have. Hope of standing justified before God. We're paid out by the death of Jesus. But wait, there's more. 1 Corinthians 6 and 14 says, Now God has not only raised the Lord, but will raise us up through his power. 1 Corinthians 15, 20 through 22 says, But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who are asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all died, so also in Christ all will be made alive joy, endurance. Think about it. Not only are we in good standing with God through Jesus' sacrifice, we're also immortal through his resurrection. The cross, the bloody, splintery, fly-infested cross is only half the story. And it's certainly not the best half. The cross brings us sorrow and a realization of guilt. It was our sin that killed the sinless lamb, that tortured him to death on the cross. He had to be tortured to death on the cross to save us from hell. Now the empty tomb saves us to heaven. That's probably a little simplistic, but it's an easy way to think of it. The cross saves us from hell. The resurrection saves us to heaven. The cross has been a symbol of Christianity for millennia. My father-in-law tried to uh, come up with a better symbol for Christianity. He, in, he got, tried to get me to figure out a way to represent the empty tomb. Well, a cross is simple. It's two marks. An empty tomb, how do you symbolize that? But isn't that really where our emphasis should lie? Not on a horrible torturous death, although it was necessary, but on a glorious resurrection to never die again. There's amazingly amazing significance in the empty tomb. When we focus on just the cross, we're again focusing on a partial truth. Let's look at the significance of it in Romans 6 and verse 4. Therefore we have been buried with him through baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have become united with him in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. You don't have one without the other because of the work that Christ did. Ephesians 2 and verse 6 and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places with Christ Jesus. 
not only resurrected to live eternally, but to be resurrected to be seated with Christ, almost as if we deserved it. We're brought to a place that we have no business being because of the love of the Father and the sacrifice of the Son. Seated in heaven with Christ. What more could we ask? What more could bring joy? Nothing. That's the ultimate. There have been through the ages those that have been raised from the dead. A couple of widows' sons and Lazarus. But they all died again. They got to die twice. Through Christ, that's no longer us. We'll be raised never to die. One time deal. Seated with Christ in the heavenly places, in a home not made with hands, no more sorrow, no pain, just joy. Fellowship with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit eternally. No more need for endurance. No more temptation. Our ought tos have been turned in our want tos. Our ought tos have been turned into our want tos. That's true freedom. How are people usually forced into something, into some action? Well, by a death threat. A real or perceived danger to life. Are we subject to this? Not really. You can't really threaten somebody with heaven. Hebrews 2 and verse 15 says, And might free those who through fear of death were subject to slavery all their lives. We have no fear of death. We're not subject to slavery. We can't be coerced. The ball is in our court. We decide. Is it worthwhile to give up this earthly life? It could be. And there's no downside. That's joy. You can't threaten someone with heaven. In Christ we have become eternal. In 1 Corinthians 15, 54 and onward. But when this perishable, this life, will have put on the imperishable, and this mortal will have put on immortality, then will come about the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? Bulletproof. We now find ourselves in the amazing circumstance in which neither life, because we're dead to it, or death, because Christ overcame it, can hurt us. Life, death, all the same. We're above that. Galatians 2 and 20 says, I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. Joy? Absolutely. Because of the resurrection of Christ. Now's the time when I'd say, come forward as we stand and sing. If you have a need, call me. Call the elders. We're apart, but we're not separated completely. Let's uh, renew our acquaintances, renew our communications, and be joyful Christian people. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, your word, for your blessing on us. We, we pray that as we go through the rest of this week and through the rest of our lives, you'll continue to watch over us and bless us keep us all safe during this strange time we're living through. We thank you for your son and the forgiveness we have through him. It's in his name we pray. Amen. My hope is
sweetest frame, but holy trust in Jesus' name, Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Yeah.